Shock wave. Wait, I feel like. Oh, mess it up. Shock and awe. <laughs> okay, shock and awe. Get, get with it. Good song. Um, so, welcome. This is our mid month for October. Welcome to We Made It Halfway. Turn up, turn up. Um, honestly, the majority of the crazy, strange, like, intense stuff has already passed. Okay, so that's good. Um, relationships clearly has been on key since the, like, the end of September with Libra season starting, and now we have Mercury who's moved through Libra, the Sun who's moved through Libra, Venus is now in Libra, like, zero degrees, and then Mars is on its way into Libra, so the rest of October is going to be tons of Libra energy. We even have Jupiter and Scorpio. We'll be having Scorpio season happening, um, Mercury as well moving into Scorpio, so that energy shift as well. We'll talk about that. And um, if you didn't check out the weekly I just did from October 15th through the 21st, check that out because it's going to go, go way deeper into what is going to be happening astrologically for um, that week. And so I'm going to just kind of glance through since it's just literally the half of the month I can't go through every day because it would take forever. So we're just going to breeze through these days, but if you want to get a deeper insight, check the weeklies, okay? And if you want to get even deeper, check the dailies, because that's going to be um, per day, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so basically what's been happening is we had the full moon in Aries kicking off October. Um, Venus and Mars were together, and what was going on is basically Venus has been behind Mars since the retrograde, her retrograde in February, and we've been having to really... Venus has been trying to catch up with the Mars, the masculine. So the feminine has been trying to catch up with the masculine um, in all aspects. So that is like the masculine has been, think about even the politics. Masculine energy has been very like driven and everybody's been trying to make decisions and changing all these things and not a lot of, you know, receptivity and, and, and nurturing has been happening, um, which is more feminine. Um, you know, protests and stuff has a very masculine energy. Everybody's been trying to get their jobs and get their figure out their career, very masculine energy. But now Venus has passed, and starting on the full moon in Aries, it illuminated a lot of things, and now the receptive's in, in the lead, the intuitive's in the lead, and the divine feminine's in the lead now, um, going through Virgo, and about to slip into Libra. Um, well, she did today, actually, so. Um, which is great news. And so basically what that did is now our relationships are, we had a balance point, and now we're able to kind of relay back and forth now. Because before, we had Venus catching up, and so we were trying to heal things, and, and it just, you know, was an imbalance completely. Now we had that balance point on the 5th of October, and so now we're kind of trying to figure out where everything stands in our relationships. Um, we have tons of Uranian transits with Uranus the week from October 15th through the 21st. Mercury, Mercury and the Sun will be opposing Uranus, um, in Aries, okay? So Uranus and Aries have been happening since, like, 2012, I believe. Redefining our personality and, you know, our uniqueness and kind of what makes us stand out and the, our path, our personality path almost, our journey based on kind of who we are. Redefining who we are all since 2012 with Uranus and Aries. And with that, you know, defining who we are, opposing all this energy in Libra, Mercury, and the Sun... This is causing major insights coming in, um, you know, aha moments, Uranus rules sudden revelations, sudden realizations, so lots of shifts have been occurring in our personalities and how we're feeling about ourselves, and that instantly has been shifting how we feel in our relationships, okay? So that's going to be the big key thing um, this week coming up with Mercury opposing the sun, I mean Mercury opposing um, Uranus as well as the sun, okay? So check out the weekly again for that, I'm going to go way deeper into that, um, there, or I do go deeper into that there. Um, then we have Mercury going into Scorpio on the 17th of October, which is going to be really big. Right now, you know, Mercury is our thoughts and our communication, and it's kind of been this airy Libra energy and, and, and just kind of, you know, thinking really a lot about others. We can't really stop thinking about everybody else because Mercury's in Libra. So on Tuesday, Mercury will move into Scorpio, where we will be having, you know, our, we'll be really in the investigative kind of mindset. Scorpio is like the detective sign, so we'll be really trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in situations and kind of like 
you know, lots will be coming up. Um, lots of hidden things will be revealed to us, secrets coming out, that kind of thing, starting on Tuesday for the next two weeks. Okay. Um, and then we have Scorpio season with the sun coming into Scorpio um, after that on the 23rd of October. Okay, so we started with Jupiter moving into Scorpio on the 10th of October. Then we had Mercury happening now, 17th of October, and then a little bit later on, Scorpio season starts 23rd with the sun in Scorpio. Okay, lots of Scorpio energy. Um, so lots of secrets, lots of things in the dark that are coming out. Lots of, you know, things that need to be healed that are being illuminated. And, and, and you know, no more secrets and no more... It's about being authentic and, and shining a light on every aspect of yourself and, and, and others as well. Um... New Moon and Libra is going to be happening on Thursday, 19th of October. It's going to be great. Um, that's going to be really offering um, just newness. You know, new moons are about setting new intentions and new beginnings. And with it being a Libra, it's with partnerships and relationships. Okay, so we now are having all the Scorpio energy coming in with Mercury and the Sun opposing Uranus as well, Mercury and Scorpio, um, to kind of give us an understanding of ourselves and relationships and kind of the feelings and vibes we get from others about us and, and how we feel about others um, and so we're going to have all that together and kind of have a new place meant for others in our life and ourselves in their life on this new moon um, again in the weekly you're going to go way deeper um, and then it's about you know Mar we have Mars moving into Libra that's going to be big Sunday the 22nd okay because Mars is our motivation and our drive so we've been talking the game of relationships and thinking about it for a minute with Mercury and Libra almost in Scorpio, so the, it's been completely through Libra. The sun's in Libra as well, so our awareness, we're thinking, you know, we're seeing relationship changes. We're, we're seeing, you know, lots of people in our lives. We're dealing with relationships now. But Mars is our motivation and our drive, so we're not even really motivated to really take the change to really initiate newness in our relationships or anything like that until the 22nd when Mars goes into Libra, the day before Scorpio season. And then the last major transit would be on the 26th of October when the sun conjuncts Jupiter. Okay, this is going to be a super lucky day. Um, Jupiter is a very benefic planet. It's known as the most benefic. Um, it offers the blessings and abundance and expansion um, with whatever it touches. So the sun is your awareness, your life, your ego, yourself. So with that connection, there's going to be an expansion on self and how you feel about yourself. Um... You know, with it being Scorpio, it's going to be kind of more of an emotional transit. This time last year, it was in an air sign, so lots of communication. So this time, it's going to be more emotional. Um, and that's definitely just going to be illuminating lots of things. And and really, you might receive, you know, blessings and money from others as well with that um, opposition to Jupiter and Scorpio, which rules joint finance as Scorpio does. So um, expect and look out for that. Again, the weeklies will be giving tons more details of the weekly coming the next week, from the 22nd through the 28th, will be I'll be going way deeper into detail on that Sun conjunct Jupiter there. Um, so that is our astrology for the second half of October. Um, you know, super excited to see what comes out, what's revealed. Again, whatever happens, just know it's in the flow and is for your highest good, and it's going to be moving you into newness and moving you into greater, you know, greater things. Um, one thing next we're going to go into our oracle and tarot guidance for each sign um this time you know every time i have to switch it up because I, why do the same so this time i'm just going to literally, literally just kind of be coming from a a flow i just kind of feel like my readings and when i have clients you know my, my, my clients sometimes I, I remember one reading literally went three hours because the flow you know what i'm saying and so I'm going to try the flow and just see where that goes and not really give it labels as to what I'm going to be pulling for and just see, you know, where we are situationally and, and energetically. And I was kind of be um, talking stream of consciousness and then allowing, you know, the, the messages I need to just come out there. Okay. And so let's get into that now. Second part of the reading. What's up? What's up, everybody? Okay. So little, I'm just going to insert this in here. Um, I'm doing the, the Oracle readings different this time because I feel it's a different vibe with the Scorpio energy coming in. Um, and these cards, I feel like we want a really deep, resonating reading. And, and, and these cards have really been healing me and helping me recently. Um, and so I'm going to use them for every sign. Um, this is Sacred Rebels. And in the guidebook, the, 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 you know, each card comes with a very detailed, um, description and, 
is amazing what, you know, what, what comes out, you know what I'm saying? So for each zodiac sign, I'll be pulling a card and reading what that card means for your mid month for October. So stay tuned. I'm super excited to share this card, these cards with you. Um, and let's get into it. Thanks. What's up, Aquarius? Welcome to your October mid month, guys. Um, so I was shuffling your cards and two dropped on the deck. So we are feeling abundant this, this, this month. Okay. We, we have two cards for us to read. Um, I'm excited to see because clearly Aquarius here. So I want to know what the message will be for going out of October for us. Um, the first one we got is number 30, the perfection of your life. And number eight, be the hunter, not the hunted. All right, so let's get into number 30 first, because that's the first one I, I, that I saw. And then we'll get into the second card. Okay. Oh, almost there. Here we go. The perfection of your life. Have you ever seen a storm pictured from above? It can appear to be so beautiful and elegant. This is certainly different to the ground view, which can be quite a violent experience. So too, there is a great beauty in your life now. However, at this point in the natural process, you may be experiencing it as anxiety-inducing rather than beautiful. You may, see, you may sense it as internal chaos. You may feel it as something that is waiting to erupt from within, as a restlessness or an anxiety that you cannot quite articulate but sense vaguely nonetheless. Perhaps the chaos is fully fledged and a person or situation in your life is causing all kinds of havoc, upheaval or change and uncertainty in your world. Whether the chaos seems subtle, strong, internal or external, this oracle brings the same message for you. All is unfolding according to a perfect higher order. You are currently enduring a cosmic spiritual storm, which is having an impact on you. It is clearing thought things out, ruffling feathers and preparing you for that lovely, super fresh, uplifting feeling that one experiences after the storm has finally passed. If you have drawn the oracle of after the storm as well, this message is amplified for you. If you cannot believe there is anything happening, even at a subtle level, because you feel stuck, denied, bored, thwarted, or stale, this oracle brings you a message also. No matter what appears to be, in truth, there is only the unfolding creative genius of the universe. You are not forgotten. And I just saw 222 in the video, so follow the guidance, more guidance coming. Um, you have not been looked over. You have not been denied, found wanting, or rejected as unworthy. The storm that needs to erupt is in your own heart. Do your liberating rain dance. Rage, weep, pray, dance, paint, or sing. Express whatever is needed, however is needed, to exercise the blocked energy in your heart. Then you will call on the powerful protect per perfection of your life path, as it aligns for the next creative turn of the spiral of life. Once again, you will trust and directly experience the flower of life unfolding within you and around you. The healing process says, imagine that you are standing at the silent center of a great cleansing storm. All aspects of your life are rained upon, blown about, and even messed up a little. How do you feel? The storm then passes and you are left with the soft sunshine and slightly soggy feet. Some parts of your life will have been washed away. Some others will be strong and stable, a bit messy perhaps, but still there nonetheless. How do you feel? Underneath your feet, you see a pattern forming in the cleansed earth as, it, as if it is rising up from the damp, slightly disturbed soil. A golden, gleaming geometric pattern of the flower of life glows. Since the perfection of the form, See how each flower feeds into the next in symmetry, harmony, and balance. Finish this practice by saying, I give thanks for the higher order of my life, which I trust implicitly as it guides me into wholeness and love. From that which appears as chaos, new order is arising. I trust this and receive the gift of higher order in my life now. Through grace and mercy, so be it. Relax for a moment, become aware of your feet, and in your own time, go back to your day or evening. You have completed your healing process. If you are very drawn to the flower of life pattern, you may like to research it further and draw it or color it into your journal as a visual meditative exercise. 
All right, and now we're going to get into the second message. Number eight, be the hunter, not the haunted. Hunted. Okay. Boom. Number eight, do you feel you're at the beck and call of circumstances, situations, and relationships that are outside of your control? And again, this is about this storm. So there's a storm happening for Aquarius right now, and we're kind of, you know, being asked to be grounded and centered within. Um, uh, let's see. Is your attention being called away from what you love, from your passionate focus upon your own journey and creative self-expression? Are you feeling roped into becoming a support, tonic savior, and heal all for others? There is a big difference between healthy supportiveness in a relationship, which includes healthy self-support, and ignoring your own journey out of mis dis misplaced guilt, shame, unworthiness, or the belief that the needs of others are more important than your own. That is not compromise. That is unhealthy, neglectful of yourself. You are being asked to see through the assumptions, expectations, tantrums, or manipulations that may be put upon you by yourself or others. See, see through them to the truth. You can only sidestep, change your response to, or choose to release that which you can recognize. This oracle brings you some important news. You are capable of seeing the truth outsmarting old patterns and responding more creatively to craft new and improved relationships. You don't have to be drawn into the dramas of others or the suffering of repetitive struggles. You can become still and intent with a willingness to see the truth. In doing so, you will be open to being shown another way through the inner wisdom of your heart or a flash of insight from the great universal mind that penetrates your own awareness. This oracle also brings you particular guidance that there is a message coming your way. This message will be important to you and you are not to paint it as anything more or less than what it is. Sit with your heart. Take your time, even if there is a deadline for your answer. You will be able to bend and stretch time so that in your own real, in your relaxation, you can feel for what your truth is. In the situation at hand and respond appropriately. The more honest your response without the need to be aggressive or apologetic, the more energy you will be unleashing from unhealthy patterns and into the fresh new course your life now wants to take. This is a powerful time for you. No matter how seemingly small or how apparently dramatic events around you appear to be, know that you are stepping into a new phase of empowerment. From that place, a new freedom and self-love will emerge. Ooh, my eyes itching. Ooh, okay. Mother Nature offers you the wisdom medicine of the owl, the ability to hear what is not spoken and see what is hidden in darkness. Trust what you feel beyond appearances. The power and magic of the owl is working with you and Mother Nature is by your side, assisting you in navigating the current life's transition into a new way of being. Boom. Okay, so that is your reading guide. And now I'm going to get into the healing process for this card. Relax and imagine, perceive, or feel that there is a deep indigo night sky above you and a full moon shining. There is stillness. For a moment, there is peace. Then you just hear the sound of wings moving through the air and you see an owl pass in front of the moon. There is grace and unwavering focus in the moment, in the movement. There is absolute certainty and precision. Feel the power and natural ability of that animal to navigate with strong, unwavering instinct. Now, imagine that, that, that the owl is with you. It might be sitting above you on a tree branch or by your feet, for example. Feel your vision become sharp and your heart acute, and your hearing acute. You are able to see, hear, and sense the truth, even when it is obscured by lies, manipulations, unconsciousness, or deception. You will be the successful hunter for the truth. You will not be hunted down or fall prey to illusion. Say... I am willing to accurately perceive the truth in whatever life situation is now helpful for my spiritual growth and creative awakening. I feel empowered to commit to myself and my path without fear of holding back. I receive this vision through unconditional love, so be it. In your own time, just open your eyes, then you have completed your healing process. Notice the intuitions, thoughts, and impressions that occur to you over the coming days or weeks. <clears throat> don't discount your sense of things. When something occurs to you, don't dismiss it. 
Instead, affirm to yourself, with unconditional love, I will be inspired as to how to creatively and consciously deal with this. So be it. All right, guys. Thank you so much, my Aquarians. And I hope you guys, um, you know, really enjoyed this, this reading. Um, both cards definitely resonated with me, and I definitely think they had a theme together. Um, it's interesting that both these are also depicting the forest and the kind of a natural theme. Um, so stay tuned and stay true. Aquarius, we always seem to know we have a really insanely accurate intuition. Okay, it's not through feeling. It's more just a sense of in our mind we seem to know. We just tend to know. And so we need to trust that, okay? Sometimes we can be manipulated and be pushed different ways um, and give people the benefit of the doubt. Like, oh, yeah, that, yeah, I'm feeling this, but it's cool. Trust your feelings and, you know, just stay true to yourself. And I will see you guys in November. Um, if you want to get a personal reading or go deeper into a situation, get in contact with me, email me, website, Instagram, and I will get back in contact with you. Much love, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Deuces.